This is a major key. I, I can't believe that just happened. And that this is free. You can do this for free. You get in the primary inbox of people who potentially want to buy your beats by using this tool. What's going down? I'm not going to waste time with an intro. This is not clickbait. Uh, I'm going to give you five tools to sell more beats in 2023. And these are tools that I just learned about this year and started the using within the last month. So the first tool, ironically, is AI. We've been talking about how AI is purportedly going to replace all of us sometime soon. But for now, we can use it to our advantage. And how can we use AI as part of our beat selling strategy? Here's how. I'm going to use ChatGPT for this. Actually, I'm going to alternate between two different uh, AI systems. And these are new. They'll, they'll get better with time. But what I'm going to focus on right now is email marketing. Email marketing is, to me, still a great way to market your beats. Some people will say email marketing is on its way out or it's, I don't know, a thing of the past. My open rates are still 50 to 60 percent, which is pretty good. I'm proud of that. So if you haven't used email marketing, I think that should absolutely be a part of your strategy. But then the question becomes, what do we write in the emails? And I'm an advocate, and so research proves this as well, of sending regular emails out to your subscribers. ChatGPT can help with that. For example, I can type, please write me an email to sell my beats. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Okay, there you go. Look at that. Please write me sell beans. I want to see how different this is from the last one. Very similar, uh, but different wording. And then obviously you would tailor this to your own language. Okay, here are three emails. And honestly, these look very similar to the emails that professional copywriters are spamming me with to try to get me to send them money for providing the same service except theirs are a little corny i'm not gonna lie a little cornier than this but at least if i use chat gpt i can tailor them uh, to my own voice let me try this with google bard google bard is google's version of chat gpt And then it gives you email tips at the bottom and gives you a link to a free sample beat as well. Actually, I had ChatGPT do this for me before I hit record. And they also had, it was crazy. They wrote me an email that is pretty much exactly the same format as the email that I send out every week. Here's another thing you can do. How about this? Please write me an email subject line that will ensure my email reaches the primary inbox and does not end up in the spam or promotions folder. It's very specific. New beats for your next project. You know what? I'm going to test this one out. Let's see if this works. I just sent out a test email with that subject line. Wow. Look at that. It's in the primary. Okay. So this works. Look at this is amazing. Look at how that worked. You're getting in the primary inbox. Damn. I'm impressed. This is a major key. I, I can't believe that just happened. And that this is free. You can do this for free. You get in the primary inbox of people who potentially want to buy your beats by using this tool. All right, the second tool, this is something that BusyWorks uh, introduced, I think earlier this year, is the new research tab on the YouTube Creator Studio. So you want to go to the YouTube Studio. You want to go to YouTube Studio and the research tab under the analytics menu. Now, let's just search something general like type beat. It'll show you in a general sense, just all searches and the search volume. It's not as advanced as vidIQ, or I should say it's not as detailed as vidIQ, TubeBuddy, that kind of thing. And it's free though, but it can show you content gaps and content gaps are keywords 
in which there is a higher search volume and a smaller number of competing results. That means these are keywords that are easier to penetrate. Why did I say penetrate? These are viable keywords. You should use these keywords. They're low competition, but people are actually searching for these keywords. So dance type B20, I wouldn't use that 2022 is last year, but maybe you have a, uh, I don't know, a YouTube tutorial channel. Search volume is low, but you can rank on this. Beat tutorial. Oh, there's a content cap on beat tutorial. So try these out, at least as part of some of your keyword research. The third, and this is actually two in one, um, Rap Chat. I've been using Rap Chat for a long time. As you can see, I have almost 36,000 followers and almost 1,000 beats uploaded. Now, when I first signed up, there was no way to directly monetize uh, your beats on Rap Chat or send people directly to your beat store. What people do with the app is it's you know mostly for recording artists they can download beats not even download them they, they record them right in the app they can record their vocals over a song so it's a great way for people to just demo songs and browse beats but for the longest time i was just uploading beats to it and hoping that somehow people would you know find me because my website was in the in my, my profile bio section and blah 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 I used to put my, my phone number up there actually now, as of this year, there's a way for people to directly access the purchase links. Let's say someone wants to get this beat from me. They can just go right on the app or the desktop uh, version, click on buy beat and look where it goes straight to my beat store. Similarly, there's a, another app that basically does the same thing called Voloco. I just found out about this last week. I still need to sign up. Go to voloco.resonantcavity.com slash producer slash sign up. That's a long ass URL, but you can do the same thing and it will include a link directly to your, to your beat store. They've already, I don't think they work with beat stars, but they just know that that's one of the ways that recording artists purchase beats and produces sell beats. So they have all of this accounted for and you can upload individual beats to the site because no matter what, wherever, as a general rule, in my opinion, wherever there are potential customers, wherever there are people who want beats, get your beats there. This third tool isn't new, but I want to combine it with some new technology. We're going back to keyword research. VidIQ, just the free version, a free Chrome extension that you can download right now for free, is a great tool. I mean, people use it for keyword research, but I'm gonna encourage you to use it to steal, to reverse engineer successful producers' channels, essentially. If I search for J. Cole type beat, right? Let's check out Just Dan Beats. This guy has a ton of subscribers, he's doing well. We can look at his keywords, spy on his keywords, see, you know, with VidIQ, what this user is ranking on and we can test some of these keywords out to see if they're going to work for us but we can also just completely reverse engineer everything that they're doing i mean if they're keyword stuffing if they're posting the title down here if they're using hashtags how they're formatting not only their titles but their descriptions we don't need vidIQ to do that but we we can use vidIQ to spy on pretty much everything else and what I would do is not just say, okay, I'm just going to copy all of their content and suddenly blow up on the J. Cole type beat keyword niche. I don't think that's how it works. What you could do, what, what I would suggest, go back to our AI tools. Please give me low competition keywords. Why can I not spell late low competition YouTube keywords? related to the search term J. Cole type beat. I know Bard is not gonna play, okay, there, here we go. Okay, these keywords are all related to the search term J. Cole type beat, but they are less competitive than some more popular keywords. And it spells it out for you. This means there will be less competition for this keyword and it will be easier for your videos to rank higher in the, so in the search results. Um, I'm gonna try this same search term in chat gpt and let's see what happens some of them are similar but hey now we just steal the format from this other person and try to rank for a less competitive keyword using that format did i say that last one was the third tool it was actually the fourth tool so let's let's hit number five let's talk about youtube shorts if i search for tight beats in a youtube short search 
there's not that much there i don't know what the hell any of this has to do with type beats yeah okay so it just it looks like people aren't really using youtube shorts and youtube shorts are being prioritized by youtube right now because they're trying to compete with instagram reels and TikTok and so forth now what i don't recommend doing is completely and i've, I've talked to producers who are doing this completely abandoning just regular youtube uploads and uploading all your beats as I had to restart the recording process because my cat knocked over an acoustic panel and unplugged a bunch of stuff as the acoustic panel fell on top of my expensive studio equipment. As I was saying, some producers are rushing to just replace their regular uploads with shorts. I don't recommend that. What I do recommend is using shorts, at least for now, because YouTube is prioritizing them, just creating vertical versions of your beats, seeing how they go, using SEO principles as well, that still applies. And then also making sure that either in the description or as a comment that you leave on your own short or both, that you do include a buy link. I see a ton of producers releasing shorts that don't have any sort of buy link, any sort of information on how people can actually purchase that beat. If there are more tools that I don't know about that I didn't mention in this video, please leave a comment. And then also leave a comment if you know better ways of using any of these tools, especially the AI tools, because those are really brand new and it's gonna be interesting to see how sophisticated these tools actually get over time, especially when it comes to things like hacking the YouTube algorithm or hacking the Gmail <laughs> algorithm. You saw we did both of those things, but it's very early on and maybe at some point especially Bard, is going to catch on that we're using these tools to sidestep a lot of the filters that Google itself has put in place. Much success to you. Appreciate you subscribing, leaving a comment, liking the video. Peace.